Uh, right, I'm almost ready. Have, have you done uh, this kind of thing before? Um, I long, long time ago in the sixties with uh, John Freeman, that face-to-face uh, -face thing. But, uh, yeah, but I mean, any he was a hopeless amateur. Broke down, wept halfway through the interview. How did it resolve that particular encounter? Yeah, I gave him a hanky and told him to pull himself together. I did a, a bit of a appearance on on the tube <laughs> with uh, Paula Yates and uh, Jules Holland and played a bit of uh, boogie on that but mm. um, not not an, I, I'm not a, a <coughs> not radio I've only done done uh, television so this is all a new world to me um so I wasn't listening to that are you ready to go yes I'm not, I'm off any minute Sir Arthur, your work with eels is very well documented. It's perhaps less well known that during one experiment you came very close to death. How did that happen? I was trying to test the, the strength of the eel and whether the strength of the eel was enhanced by an injection of thiobizilin, which, as you probably know, is a, is a, a steroid much used by uh, Betty Grable in the early days of Hollywood which gave her those wonderful legs because she was born with legs only three inches long and her parents were determined to have a world-class film star style daughter but uh, through administration of this drug and um, what is called tugging namely pulling by the ankles uh, they managed to get uh, Gable's legs up to the required film star length. Wasn't there also a functional problem in this process? Sometimes things got horribly out of hand. Yes, well, there was one occasion, I don't know if you've ever seen the sequence, but uh, there are outtakes in the British War Museum which show Grable starting off a dance routine with the very long legs and uh, winding up uh, basically looking like a tea cosy. And uh, the effects were, uh, of the drug and the tugging were, were variable. There were many days she couldn't shoot because uh, her legs got, frankly, too long for comfort. They weren't just long, were they? They, they, were they flexed backwards. She could walk both ways, yes. Which um, was an effect which startled uh, Louis B. Mayer. Once I remember Louis B. Mayer was um, on his casting couch, casting himself. And suddenly he thought he saw Betty Grable walking in, in fact she was walking out. And um, that got up his nose, he, he, he was easily slighted. Let's get back to you fighting the eel on the table. I believe during the course of that encounter you did very nearly die. Did you ever think during the struggle, I don't care if it kills me? Well, there were moments, there were moments where I thought, well, I've had a long life, and I've had a varied life. And I've had uh, just about enough of it, really, all this bloody eels. Bloody, bloody, bloody eels. I mean, as soon as you get hold of one, they start slithering all over the table. You ask them what's the secret of their jaw moving, they don't say a bloody thing. So I was, I was tempted. But um, there was work to be done, and uh, it will be done. And I will be done. It makes one sorry to hear you talk like this. Many would say that... Before the eels, you were a different man. Well, before the eels, of course, I was um, caught up in my love life. Caught up? Caught up, yes. I don't know if you remember the um, cha-cha boogies of uh, Edmundo Ross, but um, Lita Rosa was a magnificent singer, rather similar in a way to... Um, Alma Kogan without the bounce. And um, we had a, not an affair, more of a correspondence. I sent her a postcard from, um, I think it was Tibet. Yeah, I never got a reply because she was a, she was a married woman. And uh, so it all petered out. But you still haven't recovered. There's something unresolved about that relationship. Um, I'm not easily given to, to tears, but, uh, not hearing back from Lisa was, uh, a bit of a body blow. What was it about her that really moved you? Her name, I think. Uh, Lita. Lita, 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 Rosa, Rosa, Rosa. 
And mm -hmm. as a result of this grave disappointment, I believe you dived headlong into a life of ill-advised abandon. Yes, well, I did, to, to try and forget her, I uh, embarked on a series of meaningless affairs. They were just... They weren't even flings, they were... They were nightcaps. Did you ever meet Eric Clapton when you were there? Several times. He was quite a nice, a great comfort to me, Eric. Because he's been through so much, hasn't he? I mean, having to play the guitar all the time must be absolutely awful for him. But Eric is a pathetic individual, really. Give me Ginger Rogers or Ginger Baker, whatever the other one is. When I went to Africa and uh, taught the natives how to play the drums. You were arrested with a gun in the vicinity of Eric Clapton's apartment in L.A.? Not arrested. I was um, taking part in the racial violence in Los Angeles after the Rodney King incident. Which side were you on? I was, I was trying to mediate between the police and, and Rodders. And I've got to know him very well. He's a very nice chap. And um, we were having a Big Mac together, and the police blundered in to finish off the job they had, hadn't you know, completed. So I, I tried to mediate by saying, there he is, officer, you know, to try and calm the whole thing down, because one hates to see Los Angeles go up in flames unless one's got a camera running. That was reported in one of the Sunday papers at the time as the dark soul of Sir Arthur Streep Griebling. That night was a trail of wanton destruction which many ascribed to your near-death experience leaving you bereft of any hope. I like to think I mowed down as many whites as I did blacks, and the Koreans did very badly out of the whole deal. Do you feel any pride now about that? I feel nothing but pride. That's all I do feel. An empty, an empty pride, a hopeless vanity, a dreadful arrogance, a stupefyingly futile conceit, but at least it's something to hang on to. And the fact that you got away... With murder, yes. That's not mince words and had to pay a menial fine? Well, I don't know what to call a menial fine. It was, um, I had to do community work. I had to go and teach Tatum O'Neill to play tennis. Is there anything left for you to do once you've finished with the eels? Well, i still got to work on her backhand. Sir Arthur, it, it does interest me. Why did you agree to these interviews? Uh, the reason is, is really very, very simple. I've uh, lived a long time. I've been distorted, I've been misrepresented, and I've been quoted accurately, which is uh, perhaps the most appalling. And I thought in simple conversation with another human being, I could get some things off my chest and onto other people's. What question would you ask yourself? I would, I think, the most fascinating question of all is that one which you didn't ask last, last time. And that's the one you would ask yourself? That's the one I would ask myself. I'm not sure if I have the reply yet. There's a sort of... Uh, well, let's see. Could ask yourself that question and then see if you have an answer. <clears throat> not at the moment. You didn't ask the question, though. I, perhaps you I need internalized to, you need to it. Pro I internalized it. Wow, but you, perhaps you need to get quite firm with yourself. No, I, I, I don't have the answer. Perhaps we'll come back to that. I'm sure we will.